Instead of the term, how can we love ourselves more, I'd like to ask, how can we accept ourselves more? Um, that in the way most of us have been socialized, the way in which a child gets, uh, learns, the initial learning, is that um, the parent is under pressure to socialize the child, to make the child socially functional. And in doing that, they, um, they emotionally, whether they intend to or not, reward and punish the, the child for behaviors. And the result is some feelings of unworthiness or inadequacy or something in most human beings as a result of socialization. Very few people ever come through socialization unscathed in some way or other. Usually is left with a feeling that... Um, Somehow I'm bad. I have these things that are not acceptable. Then you build this social structure and often what you end up with is a personality that says, that's constantly looking to the world and other people, do you approve of me? Do you like me? Am I good enough? Am I acceptable to you? And uh, he, have I achieved enough? Here's a, and you get an A for effort and you feel good. And if you don't get the A, it's not like you feel nothing, you feel bad. And it's as if the baseline is negative, not zero. See, the, the, uh, when you've got a negative thing, the opposite, when you're trying to undo it, you could undo it by ha emphasizing the positive. Like, if you don't like yourself, you could emphasize, I love myself, which is, how do we love ourselves more, is the question. Or we could say, let's go behind love and hate and find a place where we merely acknowledge ourselves, where we just allow our humanity. And we hear that there is negativity in us, and there is inadequacy, and we allow ourselves. And the word that I have come up with, I mean, that I'm finding most comfortable to work with, is the word appreciation. That we come to just appreciate what is. It's interesting, uh, the way I've looked at it, is that you go out into the, into the woods, and into the forests, and you look at trees and you appreciate the trees. You don't say that tree is good and that tree is bad because one tree is fat and one is thin or one is tall and one is short or one is bent and one is straight, unless you're in the lumber business. <laughs> For the most part, you just look at the trees and you, you appreciate them the way they are. They are what they are, and you can appreciate them. But the minute you get near humans, it's interesting that you immediately go into a judging mode. You come into better and worse. And you do that out of your own insecurity. You do that out of your own need constantly to be reassuring yourself. So you're saying that person is got more hair than I do, or that person is, is see, that's the one I picked. So uh, I wonder why. That or... Or you go into, uh, you find dimensions constantly judging and equating, am I as good as, am I equal to, am I as good a mother, as, am I as beautiful a woman, am I as effective a this, a, a worker, am I, whatever it is, whatever dimension. And you get caught in constantly living in a judging realm. And um, if you start to practice seeing people as trees, I don't mean in the, uh, you know, in the sense of just appreciating what they are, including yourself. It's just starting to appreciate yourself, appreciate your humanity. Like when I get, like I'm supposed to be, I'm Ram Dass and I'm, I've worked on myself, and I'm supposed to be equanimous, loving, present, clear, uh, compassionate, um, accepting. Oftentimes, I get tired, I'm angry, I'm petulant. I'm closed down. Now, for a long time, I get into those states and I would feel really embarrassed because that isn't who Ram Dass is supposed to be. So I would appear like I was warm, charming, equanimous, compassionate, and I w there was deviousness and deception involved. And then I realized that that is, that's bad business because that cuts us off from each other. And I had to risk my truth. I had to risk being human with other people and realize that what we offer each other is our truth. And our truth includes all of our stuff. And the first thing I had to do was accept my own truth. I had to allow myself to be a human being. And um, I think that I was very helped by my spook friend, Emmanuel, who um, 
my disembodied friend who, when I said to him, Emmanuel, what am I doing on earth? He said, why don't you try, uh, you're in, on earth, why don't you try taking the curriculum? Why don't you try being human? And I had always assumed the way to God was to deny your humanity and embrace your divinity. And then I realized that the way to truth might be through acknowledging the fullness of where I found myself to be, which was my humanity and my divinity, and not reverence it or judge it, just appreciate it, just allow it, allow my humanity. So I have gotten to the point now where I am what I am much more, and some people like it and some people don't like it, and if they like it, that's their problem, and if they don't like it, that's their problem. I don't take it all on myself and as much. And, um, well, it's a slow process. It's a slow process. Now, what I found was that as I started to allow myself to be human more, just allowed what I am, things changed much faster in me. I mean, things fell away more quickly. It was as if I was locked into a model which was based on that negativity, that dislike of myself. And once I just allowed that I am human with all the foibles, things started to flow and I could feel change occurring in myself. And then I would start to experience my own beauty. And it frightened me because it was so dissonant and discrepant from the model that I had cultivated of myself over the years that I had to do good in order to be beautiful. And the idea that I just am, that what is, when you look at a tree or a rock or a river, it is in its own way beautiful. You look at decay, it is beautiful.